Hey guys, I'm Jaden Dupree and today I'll be showing you how to compress the rail with a ball and how to throw balls into the pocket. What I mean by throw, we're going to start out with a throw shot here. Uh, so let's say we're in this situation right here where we need to pocket this nine. We've played a bad positional shot. This usually comes up because of positional errors or your opponent leaves you in this position if they miss a nine or leave it hanging or something. Uh, but this ball cannot be cut into the pocket just because of the layout. It's not a cuttable ball. Now, you could use a bunch of left spin, come off of this rail, and have the cue ball spin into it. Or if you don't feel comfortable with it, you could kick up table and try to have your cue ball come back and make the nine. But again, that is a tough, tough shot, and you could easily sell out there. So the shot that I'm going to show you is actually very, very simple. does not take a lot of practice. Uh, it has a really simple concept. So the shot I'm going to show you is throwing this object ball in into this corner pocket using a bunch of right spin. Now whatever spin is on the cue ball, the opposite spin is transferred to the object ball. So if I want this ball to go left, I need right spin on my cue ball. Uh, so right spin, how much right spin do we need? Just a little bit of right spin. Don't overkill your cue ball with too much right spin. Uh, you see where that three is? That is where we are going to contact our cue ball. Just a tad bit of right spin. It's some outside spin. I'm going to show you the shot from a bunch of different angles. Uh, but this is not very hard. you got to hit it pretty full in the face. Maybe just a touch on its right side. Uh, but hit the ball fairly full with a good medium hard stroke. Uh, I, I like to shoot this with a medium hard stroke. It just helps me pocket the ball, I find. Uh, but you can shoot this as soft or as hard as you really want. Don't shoot it too soft or too hard. If you shoot it too hard, it could rattle the pocket. Uh, so it could hit this rail and kind of go around. The ball is going to go off of these two rails and into the pocket. It won't go directly into the pocket. So you need to hit it slow enough. Uh, to where it will go in, but hard enough to where it doesn't hang in that corner. Uh, so here's the So now this shot is about compressing the rail in order to make the object ball. Now let's say this ball is over the side pocket and it's on this rail right here and we cannot cut this now only shoot this if the cue ball is fairly close to your object ball you do not want to shoot this uh you don't want to shoot this if your cue ball is way back here it's a lot harder shot to control and to make uh, so we want to shoot it if it's fairly close now what we're going to do is we're going to aim to hit this nine ball to where it pushes through the point of this pocket this point can actually be compressed. If you take a slow motion camera and film a ball going into a rail, you can actually see the rail kind of bends and then rebounds the ball back out. Uh, it's a really cool thing to see. Uh, search it up on the internet. Uh, maybe if I get a slow, slow motion camera one day, I'll show you guys. Uh, but it's a really cool thing to see. So I'm going to try to play it in slow motion as well. Uh, but this shot right here, all we're going to do is just aim pretty straight at the nine ball, just a little bit to the left with a little bit below center. And we're gonna hit it pretty hard. We don't wanna hit it as hard as we can uh, because the nine ball could fly off the table. The nine ball could go into the pocket, hit off the back and then spit back out, which is very common on like diamond tables or gold crowns. That's a common thing that can happen. Uh, so watch out for that, especially if you're playing on one of those like tight tables. Uh, but this shot right here is something that comes up very, very often. A lot of people don't want to have to cut this. So like instead of pushing it through the rail, they'll try to cut it down table. But you hit this point right here, which makes this shot so much tougher. Uh, but compressing this rail right here is actually very, very simple. All you got to do is hit hard a tad bit below center on the cue ball. Not too much. We're hitting about right in between the two ones. So right below center, right here, is where we're contacting our cue ball. Hit it fairly hard, and here's the shot.
Now this shot is the same as that first shot, but I just wanted to show you from a different side to show you that this can be done pretty much anywhere. Uh, so we're going to take our cue ball right here and I want you to pause the video and think what spin we're going to need on the cue ball. So we're trying to throw the three ball into this corner pocket which is to the right. Uh, so what spin will we need on the cue ball? So if you pause the video like I asked you to and you came back, uh, you probably have an answer by now and the spin that we need to use is left spin. Whatever spins on the cue ball, the opposite spin is transferred to the object ball. So left spin on the cue ball is right spin on the three ball. Right spin on the cue ball is left spin on the three ball. Uh, so we're trying to throw it to the right. So we're going to use left spin, hit it pretty full, cut it a little bit to the left, cut a little bit to where it cuts towards this pocket just a bit, and you should be able to make this shot no problem. And here it is. Now while uh, filming this video, I also thought to add a double kiss shot uh, to this video. So I'd like to demonstrate that now. So let's imagine that we got stuck in a situation like this, where the three is directly across from the cue ball, uh, the three is frozen to the rail, and we cannot bank it into the side pocket because if you put another slow motion camera on these two, uh, when the cue ball comes and hits the three, the three rebounds off the rail and the cue ball is still going forward. The three hits off the cue ball. All that energy is transferred to the cue ball if it hits it directly. Either the three stays there or it cuts the cue ball this way, three ball goes that way, leaves an open shot for your opponent. And also on this shot, if the three ball is frozen to the rail, you cannot play this little push shot like that because no ball hits the rail after contact. If this ball is already touching the rail, it does not count like that. Uh, so if it's already touching the rail, you cannot play that shot. It will be called a foul because no ball hit the rail. Although you could uh, play the double kiss and try to leave your opponent in the same situation and have your cue ball come back and hit a rail, uh, but that is very tough to control as you can see and you can leave an open bank shot. So this shot right here, we're just going to play a little bit to the left of the three ball, use some draw. The cue ball and the three ball will actually hit each other twice. So we'll do that double kiss. And you saw how the three ball went this way afterwards. What we're going to try to do is get the cue ball, get the three ball to come this way into the corner pocket. But the reason we're using draw is it's kind of a two-way shot. So if we draw backwards off of this rail and end up with our cue ball down on this side of the table, if we miss this three ball, it'll end up on this side of the table, most likely on this short rail. So then we'll leave our opponent with the same shot that we faced, uh, but going across all eight feet, nine feet, or seven feet of table, or if you're playing snooker, 12 feet. Uh, but you'll leave them a tougher shot than what you had, most likely, uh, unless you just hit it completely wrong. But we're just going to hit it with some draw, cut it a little bit, cut, it, cut the three ball a little bit this way, but still enough to get that double kiss, and that should put a little bit of top on the three ball, and it should just follow right into that pocket. It's really a fun shot to watch, uh, and here it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button down below. If you want to be notified when I post a new video, you can click the subscribe button, then the bell icon right next to it. That'll just send you an email and a notification saying that I've uploaded a new video. If you are interested in improving your game, I'd like to introduce you to a product called the IQ Training Ball. This is the ball that I referenced to uh, every time I showed you what spin uh, I was using. And as you remember, it has different contact points on it that are used uh, in every pool game, different con common contact points. Uh, so what it does is let's say we're trying to hit directly in the center of the ball. So we have a marking for center here. So we're going to shoot a ball straight in, and then what we can see from the ball is we can see where our tip contacted. So you see, I thought I hit center, but I actually hit above center and a little bit to the left. So that can actually throw my whole game off. So that's something that I really want to work on. Uh, so you can use this tool to practice with yourself, and you don't have to have a coach there to help you. You don't have to have anyone there to help you. Just set up some balls, shoot this straight in put a 
aim at a certain target point on this, you have a ton of different target points, uh, tons of different shots that you can practice. Aim at a certain place, chalk your tip up, shoot, see if you hit where that is, and do the whole process over and over and over again. It's building that muscle memory. So if you like the order of the IQ, you can click the link in the description or go to www.iqclinic.com. That's I-C-U-E-C-L-I-N-I-C.com. Also check out my other sponsors down in the link below. Uh, check out Brutal Game Gear. Also check out poolshot.org down in the link below. Check out their protractor that I did a review on. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.